Which of the following best describes Class A biosolids? Is it A, they present no risk to either the public or workers and access should not be restricted? B, they present a risk to the public but not to workers and only public access should be restricted? C, they present a risk to both the public and to workers, so access to both should be restricted? Or is it D, they present a risk to both the public and to workers, so public access should be restricted and workers should take appropriate precautions? Pause the video and give yourself five minutes to complete the problem. Have you finished solving the problem? Let's see if you got the correct answer. Regarding biosolids, there are some facts you should know. Number one, the terms biosolids and sewage sludge are often used interchangeably, and the term sewage sludge is used in EPA regulations to establish a protective regulatory framework to manage the use and disposal of sewage sludge. Biosolids are simply treated sewage sludge. When properly treated and processed, sewage sludge becomes biosolids, which are nutrient-rich organic materials produced from wastewater treatment facilities. Biosolids are grouped into one of two categories, classes A and B. Class A biosolids, pathogens must be reduced to virtually non-detectable levels, and the material must also comply with strict standards regarding metals, odors, and vector attraction reduction as specified in the US EPA Part 503 rule. Class B biosolids are treated but contain higher levels of detectable pathogens than Class A biosolids. The use of Class B biosolids may require a permit from the EPA with conditions on land application, crop harvesting, and public access. So due to the low risk of Class A biosolids, the correct answer is A. Class A biosolids can be legally used as fertilizer on farms, vegetable gardens, and can be sold to homeowners as compost or fertilizer. In terms of nutritional value, however, Class B as well as Class A biosolids are similar as they both contain important nutrients and organic matter. Join us for episode 29 of 52 PE exam problems in 52 weeks.